introduction. So, um, in the time it takes me to rattle off this little spiel, you could have already built and published your own augmented reality pop-up book. So, um, these little markers, there were, I, it became painfully obvious I didn't bring enough stickers, but there are some stickers and little handouts that are sitting on tables somewhere, but it's open that you can print off your own if you need to. So, what is augmented reality? Augmented reality is the digital imposing of information over top of a real scene. So you point your webcam at something and you can actually insert digital information in real time over top of it. This is my favorite drawing in the whole world guy in Australia did that for me. He said it's his analog version of augmented reality. So. Okay, um, this project is inspired by Jordan Tech, which is basically augmented reality, getting it into the hands of artists, designers, hackers, filmmakers, students, teachers, basically augmented reality for the rest of us. Normally this is something that actually involves quite a bit of code. A lot of things are open source, but it requires compiling the code and recompiling it yourself and making it work. It's not as easy as that. So we wanted to make something that was truly DIY. So it's built on this open source uh, FLAR toolkit or FLAR toolkit, which is built on augmented, uh, the augmented reality toolkit. And the pop-up book, the augmented reality pop-up book that I'm talking about, has this kind of nice little effect. You hold up a marker in front of the webcam, and it actually creates this little book. There's no 3D models involved here. It's all 2D image planes. And the best part is you don't have to recompile anything. You download the code from one of these two sites, either futurestories.ca or futurestories.ca slash Toronto, sorry, or uh, slash OSC. And it you basically gives you this little folder and all the code and everything in here, but we, we included the Swift file. So you can actually just recompile this. You edit one text file, dump all your images in, and the thing springs to life. So these are all the steps you need in order to be able to make something like this. You make your own layers in Photoshop or in, even in preview, and you make a QuickTime video, and you can drag and drop it into the file. So just using something like Preview on your Mac, you can get rid of basically the background of any information, save it as a transparent PNG, and you can dump these things directly into the file. You add them to your media folder. You have the name of your, um, the name of your file right here. It's a transparent PNG. Uh, and then we have this text file, and the text file is called playlist.xml, and you modify this thing essentially just to um, insert the name of your own files here. And that's it. If you can edit an HTML web page, you can do this, because it's basically just you know, uh, the name of your files. And then if you want to create new scenes, it actually has a button in the top corner that you click on. It uh, moves it to the next scene. Um, so you can have multiple scenes on one marker. There's no limit as to how many you have. So you just copy and paste this amount of code, which is essentially just your video and all your images. And there's a little comment here that says, OK, this is my new scene. You do this over and over and over again for each scene. Um, and you just make sure it stays between the media tags, and it basically that's all you have to do. Now here's the geeky part. You actually have to fix the flash settings on your computer in order to make this test run, because the security sandbox settings won't let you do it. This is all you have to do. You Google global flash security settings, you bring that up in your browser, uh, and then you just edit the location where you want this thing to run. So when you're testing it on your computer, you add the file, and, um, or you add the file where all your projects are, and it works. Uh, if you don't do this, you're going to get a black screen and it'll give you an error message in Flash that says you can't access your camera. Once you upload it to your site, you don't have to worry about it. This is just for testing. But basically, you Google that, you fix it, and it gives you this pop-up window on their website, which is actually the settings on your computer, which is a little funny, I know, but this is how it works. And this is how you change them on your computer. Other than that, you open up this HTML file that we've included. How am I doing for time? Yeah, we're probably yeah, like way under. Um, you, if you play this back in regular speed after the talk, you probably understand what I'm talking about. So um, you open up the HTML file that's included, and it's just called multi-video HTML. You can cut and paste the flash embed code directly out of that, or just reuse it in a frame, uh, and you can embed it in your own web page. And the result is something like this. We created this one in league with the Ontario Science Centre, so it's the Amazing Cinemagician. There's four different scenes, each created by a different artist. You click through the scenes and it gives you something new. Um, the Toronto Museum Project, this is another file, this is another uh, set of projects you have access to. You can dump a Google KMZ file in there, which is just a 3D model. Um, and it has the video playing in the foreground. And then this is the other one, which is probably my favorite, my boss. Uh, she, not that I'm paid to say that, but um, <laughs> she created a poem uh, called Requiem. And this has about 16 scenes. And if you really want to get an idea of what this is capable of, if you visit this, I'll post the, you know, I'll, I'll share the link, but you can Google <coughs> Kate and Fisher and Requiem and you'll see it. It's amazing and it really shows you the kinds of things that you can do with such a simple architecture.
So um, that's pretty much